Hi, Terrence Lamb here for another tutorial in Lightroom. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about HDR editing or often known as tone mapping. And in fact, those two terms kind of get confused with, with each other. So I'm going to define that a little bit. HDR is about capturing more details or oversampling. So it's actually up to the capture medium, whether it be the digital camera that you're using or in the case of the, with the when it was originally used was film, it is meant to capture more of the dynamic range, the, the tones, the shadows, and the highlights. So today, what we, we try to do and simulate in Photoshop or in Lightroom is to try to increase that range so that we can see a little bit more of what we saw in nature with our own human eyes. In fact, our human eyes are quite adaptive and we're able to see what's in the shadows and what's in, in the sky. So like in this image, you can see that the sky is up here quite well exposed here, but in the shadowy regions where I know there's a walkway here with the brickwork and some of the trees in here, that's all sort of gone. And this is kind of a typical image that is often used to create that, that HDR style kind of imaging or tone mapping imaging. Uh, it was originally used for, for photographing atomic explosions using a film that actually had three different types of ISOs. Uh, one being ISO 400, another one sort of a, a, quite a bit lower than that, and then an ISO of 0. 0.0004 or something like that, something really slow. But um, those images were processed and then brought together and, and what we call layer mapping to create that image. So I'm going to get started here with one of the first and basic techniques. The easiest way to just start getting into recovering some of this tone in here in this in an image like this is using the graduated filter by hitting the M key and you'll find this on the either hitting the M key or finding the icon here in the top row that will give you a graduated filter that you can use now by default it should go to the exposure setting now there are a couple of other ex settings here that you can go to we're going to start with exposure this isn't necessarily the correct one to use but I'm just going to start with that one first just to show what you can do so this is it's going to take a little getting used to this but when you click on the screen and drag it I want you to click away from the dark areas because the areas that you're going to affect now we're going to click here on the screen and just drag it out and as you can see immediately I'm getting an effect that's showing up. So this line, these three lines here, the, the center line just indicates what angle this is going to be. So I can rotate this angle and you can see that there are two lines on each of the sides of that center line and that just controls how soft the effect is. So I can either create a real hard line effect or a real soft line effect. If you're working with a very straight horizon image and this one's not quite a perfectly flat horizon because we got trees in the way this would work quite well but because we don't necessarily want to put that into the trees we're going to put a little bit on the angle here and just to, to demonstrate how well that works that works pretty good let's take a look at a before and after here you can see right away what we're gaining here all this area that was shadowy and dark is now kind of recovered from this 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 technique now I'm not a huge fan of this. This is, you know, exposure compensation is is, is good enough, but it's uh, maybe good enough for some, but not for me. I, I would rather just edit a little bit of the shadowy areas. And the way that you can do that is just going back into this effects preset and just select the shadow area. So we're just going to select the shadow, which is right, up, right below highlights, and you can see what it does. Huge difference. And the nice thing about this this filter is that it's not going to affect the sky region here at all and that's that's actually a, a real plus so anything that's kind of highlight or anything that's you know really bright is not going to be affected by this but look at just how much we've recovered and that was just simply using a graduated filter let's take a look at the before and after there we go that's pretty that's pretty dramatic already you can hit the done button just so you can see that a little bit better so there you go. Uh, just using the graduated filter recovers all this detail that was lost in this in the shadowy and dark areas. You can see that there's a whole bunch of color in here. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit here. This is uh, a real testament to the Sony A7, uh, really the whole Sony A7 series. All of this is being recovered without a whole lot of grain or noise showing up here. There's a little bit of noise in here, but it's it's totally, totally workable and usable in, in this 
since. So the next technique I'm going to show is how to do this with using the adjustment brush. The adjustment brush is this last little brush here in the very end of the tool that looks like a little uh, brush here. Um, that it can be selected by hitting the K key. And you one of the differences about this now over the graduated filter, you'll notice that there's an extra menu palette that has that's showing up below it. So this palette actually shows you, well, as you can see, as my, my brush just went over to the side there, flashes the size of the brush. So as I, I move that, you can see that it changes the size of my brush. That's That outer ring controls the feathering or the softness of that brush on the outside. Now, I'm going to keep this on shadow. I actually quite like it on this shadow setting here. I've, maybe that might be a little strong at 85. Let's turn it down just a touch here. And I'm just going to show you here. And the other way that you can also change the size of the brush is using your scroll wheel on your mouse. So if you have a mouse, uh, you can just use that scroll wheel to move up and down to change the size. So I'm just going to paint this in here. You can see as the effect is being painted across my scene, it is only affecting the shadow regions. So let's paint over this rock over here. And can, it's just another way to draw the eye uh, and lead it into the scene. So here I'm just painting in the, the, the shadow in the dark areas. I want to paint in this little bit of this water here. And look at all that rocky region is being recovered as I paint through here. And all that color. So I know now that this area is not affecting everything else. It's just a little bit more control, uh, a softer effect. And if you just mouse over that little pin over here, so there's a pin that's always indicates where you started from. If I just mouse over that, that pin, you'll see the areas that I painted in. So you can see that I painted in those areas with that black mask, and it shows where the areas that, that, that you can. And you can also erase that too. So if I actually hold the Option key here on the Mac, you can actually erase some of those areas. But I'm just, I'm just going to leave it as is there, uh, just to sh demonstrate just how that effect looks. Let's take a look at before and after. Again, pretty dramatic difference. Could be argued that it's not that much different from using the gradient filter. It's it's very similar that way. So I would suggest that you know, depending on your image, depending on your subject, you will vary between those two things. So now I'm going to demonstrate the third and final way of adjusting our tone. You can do most of this through the basic slider, and I uh, you'll find that this is very similar to how I do my black and white editing. If you looked at my previous tutorial, check it out. Uh, I, I use a very similar technique. Now this image I've already underexposed it deliberately so I, I, I can capture a bunch of the skies. So in some cases you may bring that exposure down if you want to recover a little more. But in this case I'm just going to leave that flat. Uh, so if you double click on it, it will return it back to center. And I'm just going to take the contrast slider and slide it down. So as you can see, as I bring that contrast slider down, you can see already it's recovering some of the shadowy areas. Now, the only problem of doing that, of sliding down that contrast, is it flattens out the image. Now, look at my histogram. As I'm sliding that contrast slider down, you can see everything is being brought into the middle. So this is good and bad. And we're going to recover some of this. I want you to just recover that shadow by bumping it up a little bit. You know, you can crank it all the way up to an over-exaggerated state. Um, again, I'm going to show you how much is recovered, especially with the Sony A7. There is just just phenomenal color detail. We have a man walking his dog that's hidden in the shadows here that we didn't see before. That's just amazing what you can recover with today's digital technology. I'll even show it to you in a before and after. And this was all completely dark and now this is what we've recovered. Now that's a bit much. So we'll just we'll just take a little bit of a lighter approach in here. And you can adjust your your highlight if you want. I, like I said already, I really exposed it pretty well for that, but I'm just going to adjust my shadow just a little bit up in here. Now, maybe the scene is looking a little too dark. If you want to, or if you want to darken it up, you can you can certainly bring your black point a little bit. That controls your black point in this slider down below here, and also in your white point in here, you can control it so that it makes the, the 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 brightest whites a little bit brighter. So you you can adjust these to taste. Now the last thing that I like to do that uh, I find 
is, is really beneficial in this kind of image is certainly to improve your micro contrast. Because I flattened my contrast here, now I need to increase my micro contrast. Now, the effect is much better if I, I zoom it in here. I'm going to zoom in a little closer and I'm just going to adjust that micro contrast. So you can just see now that that difference. So I'll go back, I'll undo it and go back to before. So you can see how it's nice and flat before, but I'm just going to bump up that micro contrast a little bit. So as a result of doing so, this image, let's take a look at the before and after, has certainly brightened up. You can see that the saturation, even the saturation of colors has, has boosted itself up. In fact, in some cases, I may even bump up the vibrance just a touch, and I may bring the saturation just down a little bit. You don't have to do this. Now that's the, this presence section here is really just subjective, and it's up to you to do that. But it's a nice, simple way to get your image to look this brilliant, this bright, and, and intense. So there you go. Three different ways to adjust the tone mapping uh, within your images, uh, especially with cameras that have a tremendous amount of dynamic range. Power is available here. You don't need to go into other programs or do multiple exposures to capture that, especially with today's digital cameras that are available out there today. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you have any comments, please feel free to add them below. And I also welcome you to subscribe to this channel uh, for further and more tutorials.